What is ChatGPT? On today's episode, we're going to dive into who founded it, what is the reason why it was founded, is it going to create or is it going to take away jobs, and most importantly, why is Google so, so scared of ChatGPT? What the hell is ChatGPT? As always, joining me for the topic, Anna-Marie Meyer. Are you excited? Very. Let's get into it. ChatGPT is a machine learning AI tool that was founded in 2015. Now I'm going to read the names. For the people that are in the industry, you'll know this is the top of the top tier people in computer sciences. 2015, founded by none other than Elon Musk, Sam Altman, Greg Brockham, Ilya Sutskever, and then there's a, there's, a, there's a person with the surname of Zaremba and John Shulman. OpenAI focuses on developing and promoting friendly AI the responsible way. So basically what it does is when you log in, you have a registration process that takes all your details. You confirm, send your code, verified, and then you're in. Then you should see chat GPT as the following. If you compare it to Google and you do a Google search, Google will give you a reference to everything that you're searching. So for example, what are the top five business books in terms of sales and reviews? Google will find the top five business books on each site and give it to you. What chat GPT does is write you a detailed paper on all of them, listing, giving you listicles of all the valuable points from each book and the key takeaways from each book. So it's like Google, Google 5.0. That's why Google's executives came out of hibernation, out of their you know, billion dollar estates, back to headquarters to go and figure this thing out. Also, ChatGPT is the first site to attract a million users in a month. In a very short period. Very short period of time. A million users. That's more than Candy Crush. So it attracts people faster than a game can. Now, I'm going to pose a question. Is this a potential tool for kids to cheat during exams, writing papers, writing reports? I believe so. Um, at this point in time, They've tested this in a university writing an exam and it is better than any other student. So why won't students use it? And I know it's already been, been banned at certain schools. So, so it wrote the MIT exam, which is an extremely difficult exam. The BART exam, it passed. And it passed a medical exam. So your final medical exam. So basically, this is a very clever linguistic tool that recognizes the pattern of your question, searches the internet, and provides a real-time answer as if the most qualified, most intelligent person in the subject gives you that answer. And it does it in real time. At this point in time, I think the only thing that thing that doesn't have is emotions. Yes. And that's the only danger, because you're not going to get an a empathetic answer from him. So I would say this opposed to, to Google as a threat for us as a tool, but can be used in a very bad way. But I know it's blocked for sensitive information. Um, so there's certain, if you ask the bot, apparently, it's it going to say it, these contents yes, are blocked. It can't. It can't give you an illegal activity or something that's unethical or something that's um, that's not supposed to be searched. Like um, if you've got a if you've got a topic that it doesn't agree, with, it will say no. So it doesn't have empathy, but it does emulate right from wrong, for now at least. And let me put this question to you. We went to the school system, kids, and this is an important one. I think in your heart. I'm going to pose the question to you differently. 
do you write an exam to pass or do you write an exam to learn the content? Because there's a big difference. If, if I'm flying in an airplane and the pilot has written the exam to pass, in a storm, he might not know what to do. But if he's written the exam to gather the information and learn the content, then you'll know what to do. So it's a difficult question. I, I, st I still see it as very <clears throat> dangerous. Someone with emotions that would want to be a pilot obviously need to understand you're playing with your own life and many other people. So no, that person can't use this to go and write that exam. But will they? I doubt. I think... We don't know. We don't know. But for me, I want to believe that people that work with lives, their own lives, they will not use this. But in a job where you can almost like in training, gather more information and build experience, that person will use it. Yeah. And that's the scary part for me. And for kids at a younger age, I think it's very dangerous because they can't really decide which is right from wrong. Yeah. I'm going to leave you with this. ChatGPT is definitely here to stay. It's going to improve. This is version 3, version 4, for version next. 5, version 6. We'll be able to do even greater things, faster, write code, fix code. can take a website code and fix it in real time, for free, at least for now. I'm going to leave you with this thought. Everybody was scared of Google when they came out. You know, Google's going to take away millions of jobs. Okay. Everybody's scared of ChatGPT because copywriters, you know, advertisement writers, content creators are very afraid. I'm going to post it this way. Is it going to take jobs or is it going to create jobs? We don't know. Only time will tell. I'm excited about it. Uh, I've excited. been using it for a couple of days. I love the flexibility and you can regenerate answers if you're not happy with the answer that you've uh, asked the question or posed the question to. I can't wait to see where it goes. And um, I'm watching from the sideline because this is a business. Um, how will it monetize? Will it be a subscription? How many people will jump Definitely. off? It's going to be. Very exciting times we live in. Thank you very much for watching our episode. Hope you found it interesting. Have a look at ChatGPT. Tell us what you think in the comment section. Do leave a like and... And please subscribe to our channel Thank and you. ring the bell. Take care. Bye-bye.